Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening and welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Friday, the 8th of July. India's Prime Minister Modi says saddened over killing of close friend Shinzo Abe declares national mourning for Japanese leader. Local stage demonstration in Gilgit, Baltistan demand release of political prisoners. And protests seeking resignation of President Gotabaya Rajpaksa continues in Sri Lanka. And now for all the details. Former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was shot dead on Friday while campaigning for a parliamentary election in the city of Nara. Condolences have poured in from across the globe. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said he was deeply saddened and shocked as India has lost one of its closest friends who made an immense contribution to elevating bilateral relations. Modi declared India will observe a one-day national mourning for Abe on Saturday. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday expressed he was deeply shocked and saddened over the killing of one of his closest friends, former Japanese PM Shinzo Abe who was shot dead while campaigning for a parliamentary election in the city of Nara. In a series of tweets, Modi said when he met the 67-year-old Abe in May this year, he was witty and insightful as always. Little did he know that it will be their last meeting. He said, entire India today mourns with Japan and stands in solidarity with our Japanese brothers and sisters in this difficult moment. Modi also declared a one-day national mourning in India on July 9th. He highlighted Shinzo Abe, our towering global statesman, made an immense contribution to elevating India-Japan relations to the level of a special strategic and global partnership. During his tenure, the relationship grew and encompassed issues from civilian nuclear energy to maritime security, bullet trains to quality infrastructure, act his policy to Indo-Pacific strategy. Shinzo Abe was making a campaign speech outside a train station when two shots rang out. Police said a 41-year-old man suspected of carrying out the shooting had been arrested. A doctor said Abe had bled to death from two deep wounds, one on the right side of his neck. He had no vital signs when he was brought in. It is the first assassination of a sitting of former Japanese premier since the days of pre-war militarism in the 1930s which incumbent Prime Minister Fumio Kishida termed as an unforgivable act. Abe served two terms as Prime Minister, stepping down in 2020, citing ill health. But he remained a dominant presence over the ruling Liberal Democratic Party, controlling one of its major factions. The assassination comes as a shock for the country, as political violence is rare in Japan and guns are tightly controlled. And India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Friday attended the G20 Foreign Minister's meeting in Indonesia, which was dominated by the Ukraine-Russia war and its impact on food security and energy. The conflict was discussed in almost all bilateral meetings. Indonesian Foreign Minister said in remarks after the talks finished and called for the G20's action to find ways to end the war in Ukraine sooner. The group of 20 includes Western countries that have accused Russia of war crimes in Ukraine, while India is among the countries that have been more muted in their response. Jay Shankar also held separate bilateral meetings with top diplomats from G20 countries, including U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov, and discussed issues of mutual interest, including the Ukraine conflict and Afghanistan, he said on Twitter. Early on Thursday, he held talks with his Chinese counterpart, Wong Yi, and pressed for early resolution of all outstanding issues, including the border row in Ladakh region. And at least nine people lost their lives on Friday in Ramnagar town of India's northern Uttarakhand state as a car carrying 10 people fell off a small bridge. The vehicle was washed away amid heavy flow of water induced by rains in Nenital district. A 22-year-old woman was the lone survivor of the incident who had been admitted to the hospital for the treatment. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Twitter said that he was pained by the tragedy and his thoughts are with the bereaved families. India's annual monsoon rains usually run from 
June to September, often causing rivers to flow above the danger mark, at times damaging road and rail connectivity in parts of the country. The Indian Meteorological Department has issued heavy rain alert across several parts of the country, including western Maharashtra and southern Kerala and Karnataka states. And in news from Pakistan, the July 17 by polls in 20 constituencies of Pakistan's most populous Punjab province will serve as a litmus test for ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan's PTI as well as the ruling coalition party PMLN, reflecting which way the political winds are blowing in the region. With campaigning getting momentum, Khan at a rally on Thursday challenged the ruling government and said he was hopeful that PTI will grab maximum seats to oust Chief Minister Hamza Sharif. Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf PTI Chairman Imran Khan on Thursday warned the officials of Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif's government against following illegal orders of Punjab Province Chief Minister Hamza Sharif ahead of the crucial by polls in 20 constituencies. Addressing a public gathering in Punjab's constituency PP140, the ousted Premier alleged the Election Commission of Pakistan of supporting all those turncoats, lotas, who ditched his party for the ruling PMLN along with Hamza Sharif to ensure their victory in the assembly polls. Hopeful that his party will grab maximum seats to oust Hamza, Khan warned the ruling coalition government that even if they file 15,000 FIRs against him, he will still not back out. और जिन जिनों ने पाकिस्तान का कानून तोड़ा इस करप्ट खानदान की गुलामी की आपको कानून के कटेरे में खड़ा किया जाएगा The July 17 by-elections on 20 Punjab assembly seats are being viewed as a referendum for Imran Khan's narrative against the government Khan is making whirlwind trips to every constituency of the province to ensure his party's victory and to convince the voters not to support the ruling PMLN party. And moving on, scores of locals and activists held a sit-in protest in Gilgit, Baltistan this week to demand the release of 14 political activists who have been languishing in Pakistani jails for the past 15 years. Leaders of the Karakoram National Movement also expressed solidarity with the protesters and raised voices against the exploitative agenda of Pakistan. In 2008, 14 political activists were arrested for holding a protest to demand fundamental rights during which a clash erupted and two security personnel and seven civilians were killed. The protesters have blamed there has been no trial in the matter so far. Activists have long blamed that Pakistan misuses draconian laws to persecute activists and innocent people in the region. <laughs> और हम ये भी बताते हैं कि जो इस वक्त पाकिस्तान का सिचुएशन है इंटरनेशनल लेवल पे दुनिया के अंदर जो एक खाका है पाकिस्तान का क्यों ऐसा हुआ है ये इन हरकतों की वजह से ऐसा हुआ है जहां पे जुल्म करते हो आप लोग जबर करते हो and in news from Afghanistan, Taliban's Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sher Mohammad Abbas Tanikzai, has said that women should be involved in all areas of life, including politics and the nation's reconstruction. However, his statement is in contrast with Islamic Emirates' practical actions since coming to power last August, as several restrictions have been imposed on the rights of girls and women to education, freedom of expression and employment. Taliban's Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sher Mohammad Abbas Tanakzai, on Thursday said that the inclusion of Afghan women in government departments is necessary. Speaking at an inauguration ceremony of a trade exhibition of domestic products in Kabul, the senior Taliban leaders said that women make up half the population and they should be involved in all areas of life, including the economy, politics and the nation's reconstruction. Stenegzai's statement is, however, in contrast with Islamic Emirates' practical actions. The Taliban went back on an announcement that all schools would be open in March, leaving many girls who had turned up at their high schools in tears and drawing criticism from Western governments. The Afghan economy plunged into crisis as Western governments have withdrawn funding and strictly enforced sanctions, saying 
the Taliban government needs to change course on human rights, especially those of women. A Taliban-run gathering of thousands of male religious and ethnic leaders that ended recently by asking foreign governments to formally recognize the administration, but made no signals of changes on international demands such as opening of girls' high schools. Anti-government protests demanding Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa's administration to step down continued across Sri Lanka this week as the country faces its worst economic crisis in decades. Rajapaksa's various moves, including securing financial support from India and China, have failed to end the shortages or the spontaneous street protest across the country. Hundreds of Buddhist monks held a peaceful protest in Sri Lanka's commercial capital Colombo on Thursday and vowed not to leave until the government of President Gotabaya Rajpaksa is thrown out. Holding placards, the monks gathered outside the main railway terminal and walked to a nearby Buddhist temple where they held the protest. President Rajpaksa was backed by the Buddhist monks in the run-up to November 2019 elections with a Sinhala majority ideology. However, monks have now joined civilians in anti-government protests. Rajpaksa government's economic mismanagement and the aftermath of COVID-19 have left the cash-strapped country of 22 million people unable to pay for essential imports of food, fertilizer, medicines and fuel because of a severe dollar crunch. <laughs> On Wednesday, hundreds of protesters gathered near the parliament building were hit with water cannons and tear gas as they launched what they call the final push of the struggle to topple the government of President Rajapaksa. Rajapaksa's various moves, including securing financial support from India and China, have failed to end the shortages or the spontaneous street protests across the country. Rajapaksa on Wednesday said he urged Russian leader Vladimir Putin to help his cash-strapped island nation import fuel. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka is scheduled to present an interim budget to Parliament in August, which will include new revenue measures and cut expenditure. The IMF indicated the need for stronger fiscal measures to put public finances back on track and boost debt sustainability following a 10-day visit to the country late last month. Well, a unique Shikara carnival at the famous Dal Lake attracted scores of tourists to India's Jammu and Kashmir territory this week. Nearly 40 hand-carved houseboats were knotted together as part of the carnival, which gave the visitors a tour of the popular sites around the Placid Lake. Scores of tourists from across India gathered at the famous Dal Lake in Srinagar city in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory to take part in a unique Shikara carnival this week, organized by the local authorities. For nearly a century, the hand-carved houseboats, called Shikaras bobbing on the placid lake, have drawn scores of visitors to the stunningly beautiful Himalayan region. During the carnival, around 40 Shikara boats were knotted together, while motor boats pulled them and gave the visitors a view and tour of the popular sites on the banks of the lake. जितना सुना था उससे भी यहाँ आके ज़्यादा अच्छा लग रहा है क्योंकि खुद महसूस कर सकते हैं ना कि इसमें कितनी खुशबू आ रही है कश्मीर की ये फूलों की ये हसीन वादियों की ये पहाड़ों की पहाड़ों के बर्फों की सब एकदम स्वर्ग जैसा लग रहा है स्विट्जरलैंड जाने की ज़रूरत नहीं लगती है यही हम लोग को जन्नत स्विट्जरलैंड दिख रहा है स्वर्ग जैसा महसूस हो रहा है Jammu and Kashmir is a popular destination among tourists from across the world given its Himalayan summits and treks along with picturesque valleys and lakes. The Dal Lake, often referred to as Srinagar's Jewel, brings in huge revenue for boat rowers, houseboats and hotels around the lake. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन